Just got off the call, uh, phone. Hey guys, so I just got done milking Prudy. Hey Prudy, leave it. Leave it. <laughs> Unfortunately, she still has that piece of afterbirth. I don't know if you guys will see this in the dark here. Uh, right there. Um, so, I'm gonna go, the vet said 72 hours. This is 72 hours, so when I get inside, I'm gonna go ahead and call her um, and see if she wants to come out. Problem is today, this afternoon, we're super, super busy. Um, but I'll have to see what I can figure out because I'll either have to come home from something or whatever because we need to get this taken care of or see if, like, Chaz can come over here. Um, again, when I was milking her, she certainly seemed like she wanted to push, but it just wasn't coming out. So, it's a bummer. We'll get this taken care of. Um, I'm going to head inside, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, I just got off the phone with a vet, and uh, they are able to come out at 10, which is awesome, because if it had been this afternoon, I'm not sure what I would have done. Um, they actually asked when I was available, so I, I'm super happy with these people so far, and I haven't even met them. So they're coming out at 10. I will let you guys know. I'm going to start the van and warm it up so that we can get the kids to call out. That's supposed to be over in about, about 10 minutes. I was able to use the old empty bucket trick to get Bullseye on the other side so we don't have to worry about him. Uh, Prudence is over here. I'm gonna go grab a lead rope in case we need it uh, either To get her in the milking parlor where we can work a little bit easier or I don't know if you guys remember I put this eye bolt right here um, For the last time we need to do AI so I could clip it to here and kind of loop the rope back around her To help keep her a little bit more immobilized if we need to um, hoping it doesn't come to that, but we'll see. And then I'm gonna grab a tripod because I'm kind of hoping that the vet is cool with me filming, but we'll see. So I think I've got everything ready, at least everything that I know that I can get ready for the vet. So while I'm waiting for the vet, I want to tell you a funny story. So you know that Matt Carricker spoof video I did a few days ago? Well, um, it's actually been doing really well. And uh, his dad, who's also a Carricker, Mr. Carricker, uh, Lee, he has a channel that has 50,000 subscribers. He commented on the video this morning and said, ah, you're a very funny, funny guy. So I hope he meant, it seemed like he meant that. I thought it was kind of cool. So anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. Okay guys, so the vet left. It was a bit of a whirlwind because I needed to get the kids ready to go to co-op and she was there longer than I expected. So what we did was she took her temperature. Her temperature was a little bit low. Apparently with milk fever, uh, their temp can go down, I think she said. A lot of times, like you can feel their ears and if their ears are cold, like their extremities get cold. Um, her urine was okay. She took a blood draw, so she's gonna test her calcium through the blood draw she gave her an IV of like the lowest dose of calcium that you give so that if she's low like if she's borderline low that dose will be perfect and then we'll watch her for the next few days as the placenta kind of deteriorates uh, and the, I think it's the endometrium um, kind of rots inside of her and then she expels that she'll have to come back the vet will have to come back next week to check her again to see how she's doing she gave me a thermometer I'm gonna have to check her temperature every time I milk just to make sure that she's not spiking a fever oh and what did she do she gave her some so the IV you can probably see in the video went into her jugular which is why we had her neck turned back around the other way so her jugular was exposed then she gave her a shot of antibiotics that goes in the fat pad right behind the ear uh, because it's a multi-day dose of antibiotics. Now, I try not to do, or I try to do as few medicines as possible with my animals, um, but I have to be realistic. 
and if the cow needs help, then the cow needs help. So uh, apparently this vet works with other small farms that have, you know, one or two milking cows. And some of them must not, you know, like must be really, really averse to antibiotics. Because the vet told me, you know, okay, if we use this, it's going to be a three-day or a ten-day milk hold. And I said, okay, that's, you know, that's fine. I'm not worried about the milk hold. Let's just get the cow healthy. So this specific antibiotic, instead of having to give her two shots of antibiotics a day, it was one shot that lasts, I think she said three or four days. But the carriers in it uh, have a residual that lasts a little bit longer. That's why it has to be administered behind the ear because we don't eat the ears. So there's no worry in tainting the meat. So, um, but we won't have to worry about meat with her anyway. So. The, the key is she's doing fine now. The, you know, she, you can probably see in the very beginning of the video, she was gently pulling on um, the placenta to try to get it to come out. She said, you never really want to, you know, you don't want to yank on the placenta because you could rip stuff off and leave stuff in and it, just bad things happen. So if she had been able to pull gently and it came out, awesome, that didn't happen. So we're gonna leave it the way it is. She's got the antibiotics. Um, I'm going to keep on, you know, just keeping an eye on her closely, keep milking her, um, taking her temperature, and then she'll call me back this afternoon or this evening with the results of the blood test. Because if she's really deficient in calcium, it would mean probably that she's in the starting phases of milk fever, which then you want to get her more calcium so that um, you can get her healthy. So she said in the future, I'll need to make sure that when she's dried off, that I get her um, alfalfa hay. Sorry, I'm really bur um, blurred out there. And she said the hay that I have is great looking hay. She'd feed it to her horses in a second, but that it doesn't have enough alfalfa for her liking. Um, so she's just not getting enough calories. She said she didn't look underweight, but she could have, st you know, she could stand to put on a couple pounds. So my brother-in-law, Jason from 77 Crossbar Ranch is gonna be going to the um, someplace this weekend that has alfalfa hay. He's gonna buy me a couple bales, which uh, big, I think either big square bales or, or round bales, that should get me through no problem. And then I'll just supplement the hay that I have now with the alfalfa hay. So that's the plan. We're pulling into co-op as of right now. So I will see you guys later.